In 1959, an Air Force Office of Scientific Research Program Manager saw promise in the proposal of a young researcher from the Stanford Research Institute who had visions of augmenting the human intellect. That researcher was Dr. Douglas Engelbart, who not only invented the computer mouse, but changed the paradigm of how man and computer interact. While probably one of the most recognizable success stories credited to AFOSR funding, it is certainly not the only one. Every day, AFOSR, a directorate of the Air Force Research Laboratory, executes its mission to discover, shape, and champion the basic science that profoundly impacts the future Air Force. For example, today's AFOSR-funded computer science research takes form in many different programs at public and private research facilities throughout the world. In the Battle Space Acoustics Branch at AFRL, Dr. Nandini Iyer and her team of researchers are looking for ways to help pilots understand communications effectively, helping them accomplish their mission, a real life issue in the battlefield. Our project, uh, the, co the processing of complex acoustic scenes, when people walk into the room and initially all you hear is a cacophony of sounds, but not long after, after you've been in the room for a while, you hear these sounds starting to differentiate yourself and then you can figure out different auditory streams that are reaching your ears and you start to process the information that is present in those auditory streams. And so what we're interested in is what are the factors that help you segregate each of those streams. Uh, whether they are peripheral factors, whether they are cognitive factors that help you distinguish each of these streams from one another. Their research has led to technologies like the artificial horizon, which helps pilots maintain situational awareness in their aircrafts. What it, the artificial horizon helps pilots to do is use their own music and turn their entertainment system into a safety device so that when they fly they can make, maintain awareness of their attitude and the pitch and yaw of the aircraft. In a lab 2,000 miles away at the University of California Santa Barbara, Professor David Oshalom's Spintronics research is advancing the reality and practicality of quantum computing. So a lot of our work has been trying to manipulate another degree of freedom to build a new type of electronics technology, which is the spin of the electron in contrast to its charge. So most of today's technology is based on moving charges around circuits, both for storage and for logic. And that generates heat. It uses battery power. And part of our idea was to use the spin of a particle, which is a quantum mechanical variable, which would change the paradigm for information storage. If you can first succeed at quantum computing and you can do it at room temperature, it will just revolutionize our ability to uh, take in information and, uh, and process it and make decisions. So from the Air Force mission, it offers three interesting options. One is to build a very low power technology. The second is to miniaturize current technologies to the atomic scale. And the third is to generate new storage technologies to be able to store vast amount of information in very small volumes. Progressing even further into what some might consider science fiction, Professor Nasser Pegambarian at the University of Arizona has developed a new type of holographic telepresence that allows the projection of a three-dimensional moving image without the need for special eyewear such as 3D glasses or other auxiliary devices. One of the major applications of this technology is in the area of command and control, which means that commanders could sit around the table and look at the scene of interest. Would it be a launch pad? Would it be a city? Would it be a, whatever it is? They could look at that in almost real time and in 3D. So this is like a science fiction type movies that are becoming reality. While the research topics highlighted are as varied as their potential impacts to the Air Force, these researchers all share the same goal of providing a foundation of scientific and engineering discovery and progress. They all credit AFOSR with enabling them to discover these revolutionary new ideas and foster the creativity of students and young researchers in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics field. 
I don't think we could have made as much progress as we did in this past six years looking at the kinds of problems that we have tackled if we didn't have that continuity of funding from AFOSR. It's basically it allowed us to uh, get in new students to work on a sustained research line. It has helped us to build collaborations with the academia as well as the industry. The most important resource we have are the graduate students and it's the future of the United States, right? These are people we're training for careers in science and engineering. The best students are attracted by the most innovative, highest risk, highest impact science projects. And one of the nice things about the Air Force is they funded some of the brightest, hardest working students we could attract. Since its creation in 1951, AFOSR has funded top researchers in computer science and continues to fund the pioneering work of revolutionary researchers around the world. To learn more about computer science breakthroughs funded by AFOSR, visit our website at www.afosr.af.mil, like us on Facebook, watch us on YouTube, or follow us on Twitter.